Hello and welcome to another TLDR US video. Do you like firestorms in comment sections? Well, you've come to the right spot, because in this video we're going to be taking a look at the controversial transgender sports debate. The discussion around whether trans women should be allowed to compete with biological women in competitive sports. A debate which, while slightly niche, has become a major issue in the US and around the world. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel, because doing so not only helps us out, but also means you get more of our videos going forward. Thanks for your support. Before we get into the video, some disclaimers. In order to guarantee impartiality on this topic, this video is going to be structured more like a philosophy essay than your normal piece of journalism. We're going to do a preliminary survey of the trans sport legislation in the US, before introducing two arguments against letting trans women compete in competitive sports with biological women, which we'll call the fairness argument. We're then going to express this argument in a premise form, and then take a look at some of the ways of refuting it by denying specific premises. The fairness argument and the responses to this aren't supposed to be an exhaustive list of all of the possible arguments in the trans sport debate, but it does seem to be the most popular one. This video isn't supposed to convince you of one side or the other. Instead, it's supposed to provide some clarity and structure in what can be quite a chaotic debate. As will hopefully become clear by the end of this video, which side of this you end up on will partly depend on your intuitions, and, well, they're up to you. With that said, let's get into the video. We're making this video in large part because more and more states have recently passed laws banning trans women from competing with biological women in competitive sports. Nine states now have laws that ban trans women from competing outright, eight of which passed in 2021. These laws are often justified in an appeal to fairness. The Idaho and Florida laws are both called the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, the Mississippi law is called the Fairness Act, and the South Dakota Executive Order claims to preserve fairness in women's athletics. The basic idea is that it's unfair to expect biological women to compete with trans women. For simplicity's sake, let's call the person who subscribes to this position red. In premise form, the so-called fairness argument might be expressed like this. Premise 1. Trans women are biologically male. Premise 2. It's unfair that biological women have to compete against biological men in competitive sports. Premise 3. Competitive sports should be as fair as possible. Conclusion. Trans women shouldn't compete with biological women in competitive sports. Now, there doesn't seem to be any faulty reasoning in this argument, which means that if anyone wants to deny this conclusion, they have to first deny one of the premises. Typically, someone who supports transgender women competing in women's sports, who we'll call blue, will deny either premise 2 or premise 3. Let's start with premise 2. Denying premise 2 amounts to claiming that it's not unfair, or at least not necessarily unfair, for biological women to compete against biological men. The argument usually proceeds in two steps. First, blue will ask why we should accept premise 2. Here, Red might justify it by claiming that men possess some competitive advantage which makes it unfair, like higher levels of testosterone or growth hormones. Red could appeal to any combination of these factors, but for simplicity's sake, let's assume that Red appeals to the testosterone level issue. Essentially, Red will define fairness as similar levels of testosterone. Blue could retort that the fact that testosterone amounts to a competitive advantage doesn't necessarily support the second premise. Rather, it implies that for competitive sports, humans should be separated by testosterone level, which isn't the same thing as separating by biological sex. With the help of testosterone suppressants, it's plausible that most trans women will end up with testosterone levels closer or even lower than biological females. This is the thinking behind the International Olympic Committee's current regulations, which state that any trans woman must have testosterone levels below 10 nanomoles per litre for at least 12 months prior to competition. In response, Red could amend their claim about testosterone, and say that fairness isn't just about testosterone, but instead some combination of current testosterone levels, historic testosterone levels, human growth hormone levels, shoulder joint size, etc, etc. Essentially, Red will redefine fairness as similar levels of all of these things. However, whether you buy Red's new definition of fairness will likely depend on your intuitions about premise 2. 
If you feel that premise two is obviously true, and it's just obviously unfair to pit biological women against biological men, then you'll probably think that any definition of fairness that says biological men shouldn't be allowed to compete against biological women is a good definition. You might even think that red doesn't need a general definition of fairness to justify premise two. It's just self-evidently true. If you're not so sure of premise two, then you might feel like red is just making up some overly complicated definition of fairness to justify his position. To use a less controversial analogy, consider the definition of vegetable. A plausible definition might be any edible fruits, stems, leaves, or roots. And this looks like a pretty good definition. It's simple, and it correctly identifies all of these things as vegetables. However, this definition wouldn't include broccoli, which is technically a flower. Now, what you think about this definition of vegetable will depend on your intuitions about broccoli. If you're absolutely certain that broccoli is a vegetable, then you'll think that this definition needs changing. Or maybe that we don't need a definition to know that broccoli is a vegetable, it's just self-evident. If you're not as convinced that broccoli is a vegetable, then maybe you'll think that actually this definition looks pretty good, and maybe let's just say that broccoli isn't a vegetable. You might also think that a definition like any edible fruits, stems, leaves, roots, plus broccoli, but not other flowers, feels a bit messy, and maybe it isn't plausible. It's essentially the same argument, but substitute broccoli for premise two and vegetable for fairness. Anyway, the other route you could go to deny this conclusion is to reject premise three. There are two ways of doing this. Firstly, Blue might argue that we don't really need to make sports as fair as possible. Michael Phelps has some ridiculously and seemingly unfair genetic advantages. A two meter wingspan, double jointed ankles, and muscles that only produce half the usual lactic acid. Blue would say that if we're really trying to make sports as fair as possible, we'd either force Michael Phelps to have some corrective ankle surgery, or only let him compete with other genetic freaks. So if sports isn't really about fairness, then should we just let women play? Here, Red has two options. Firstly, that Phelps' genetic advantages are less unfair than the genetic advantages possessed by trans women, and that Phelps' advantages are an acceptable level of unfair, whereas trans women's are not. Or they could posit that Phelps' genetic advantages are actually fair, and trans women's aren't. Both of Red's responses here might feel a bit arbitrary, and without a good reason. Why should we think that Phelps' genetic advantages are any different from trans women's genetic advantages? But it's worth noting that Blue's argument that any genetic advantage is unfair presumably implies that no competition is fair and fairness is a mirage, which is a conclusion we might not feel entirely comfortable with. Again, all of this depends on whether you're happy to accept that there's no such thing as fairness, or if you're a bit more of a fairness realist, who insists that fairness is a real thing. Again, we can't and don't want to tell you what to think here. Secondly, Blue might argue that competitive sports aren't just about fairness. There's also some other principle, like inclusion, that trumps consideration of fairness. This is probably more plausible in non-competitive casual sports. It's why we'd let a little kid join our football match, even if it makes it a bit less competitive. But Blue could argue that even in high-level competitive sports, it's not all about fairness. It's also about inclusion. So we should let trans women compete. Again, we can't answer this question for you. It will depend on whether you intuitively think that competitive sports are purely about fairness or also about inclusion. Anyway, we've now talked about this for a good 10 minutes, which is probably enough philosophy for one day. As a final thing, we hope you enjoyed this more philosophical approach to the culture war, rather than the usual aggressive moralizing. We're really unsure if there's an appetite for this kind of thing, but if you enjoyed it and would like more of it, then let us know in the comments below, and maybe even share this video. Equally, if you found it really boring, then you can also say that below if you want. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.